What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fistico series. I'm in the process of naming my top 10 greatest fighters of all times. Now, we all have our own opinions and we set standards and we have criteria to embrace those standards. And I showed you in a previous video examples of my number one greatest fighter who was Sam Langford. I broke down and explained to you as to why I felt that way. Went through his career. Went through scenarios. I also explained to you, you cannot judge a fighter until his career is completely over. You can't place him in a category until he showed you all phases of his personality. What a fighter's job is to his audience is to introduce himself and let you know who he is. And he will let you know that if challenged properly. In order for you to see him being challenged properly, he has to be willing to take on all comers, all styles, different weight divisions. He has to allow himself to possibly be placed in a scenario that he's most uncomfortable with. You may have to see him sometimes cut, see him knocked down, see him thumbed in the eye, see him hit with body punches and see how he responds. My number two greatest fighter of all times meets that criteria. Now I do not have film to verify to you those things that I just mentioned to you. However, all what I have read, all of those who I spoke with, many who are in the time and era of Harry Greb can confirm to me that Harry Greb was that guy. Now, did Harry Greb Thumb, choke, eye gouge, headbutt, low blow, sometimes bite. Yes, he did. Let's get that right out the way. Did he fight in the traditional technical stance? Have technical tools, jabs, short uppercuts, and hooks? No, he did not. However, he created ways to get the job done. Furthermore, Fought in different weight divisions. Let's learn a little bit about Harry Greb. He was born June 7th, 1894, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He died October 22nd, 1926. He was 32 years of age at the time of his death. And he would become blind in 1921 after he would face William Ward, Kid Norford, who would be the colored light heavyweight champion. Harry Greb fought five years and 47 fights under that condition. Among fighters that he would fight under that condition would be fighters such as Gene Tunney, Sammy Lachlan, Johnny Wilson, Faye Kaiser, and many others. He had a total bout career of 292 fights, 46 knockouts, 64 decision wins, one win on a foul, 168 no decision contests, and won no contest. He would have three American light heavyweight championship title defenses, four world middleweight championship title defenses. He was managed by Reed Mason and Georgie Ingall. Harry Greb was absolutely amazing. He was knocked out by Kid Graves. He was a middleweight. December 16th, 1915 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. But he wasn't actually knocked out. It was in the second round. He would break a bone in his arm and he couldn't continue. By the way, he had 22 fights that year. Began his career in 1913. He was stopped by Joe Chip, who's the brother of George Chip. George Chip was a world middleweight champion. He would take the title away from Frank Klaus. 
But Joe Chip was in the corner of Jack Dempsey, 1919, Toledo, Ohio. Jack Dempsey was fighting Jess Willard for the World Heavyweight Championship title. And by the time that fight was over, after four rounds, Jess Willard was beaten to a pole. Now, Jack Dempsey's right hand would be known as Iron Mike because the plaster of Paris that was alleged in his glove. Well, I mentioned to you that Joe Chip was in the corner of Jack Dempsey and Joe Chip had knocked out Harry Greb. He was senseless, unconscious. He didn't know where he was. And up until his... end of the year of his career 32nd birthday he has said he's never been hit that hard in his life two months later Harry Grab would face light heavyweight Walter Monaghan February 26, 1916 six round no decision contest fought him in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania he would have 19 fights that year. Walter Monaghan was in the corner of Jess Willard, July 4th, for the World Heavyweight Championship title. And he noticed that there was something strange about the sound of the right hand that landed on a man who he represented that night. That was Jess Willard. He said it was a thudding sound, not a traditional popping sound. And he was the one who alleged that Jack Dempsey had plaster of Paris in his gloves. Well, Walter Monaghan was an opponent for Harry Grab. May 23rd, 1922, New York's Madison Square Garden. Harry Grab would defeat light heavyweight, former America's Expeditionary Forces. He was a champion in the AEF, 1919. And his name was Gene Tunney. Defeated him in 15 rounds, and he would win the America's Light Heavyweight Championship title. Away from Gene Tunney. August 31st, 1923, defeated world middleweight champion, Harlem's New York, Johnny Wilson. Defeated him in 15 rounds in the New York Polo Grounds. A Gene Tunney defeated Battling Levinsky, January 13th, 1922, New York's Madison Square Garden. It was 12 rounds. It was for the America's Light Heavyweight Championship belt. After the fourth round, Gene Tunney would mean business. He would become the America's light heavyweight champion. Johnny Wilson defeated St. Paul middleweight. Michael Dowd, Boston, Massachusetts, May 6, 1920. Defeated him in 12 rounds. Harry Greb was a carbon copy of a Pasmanian devil. He would come at you at all angles. He was a winner at all costs, regardless of rules. That's why he fought in states such as New York 27 times, Pittsburgh 104 times, Maryland five times, St. Paul five times, Canada one time, and so on and so forth. He faced 47 fights with one eye. He would take on Kid Norford, 1921. We would also face Jeff Smith, Tommy Lachlan, Tom Gibbons, Gene Tunney, Johnny Wilson, Mickey Walker, Jimmy Slattery, Jeff Smith. He had 13 title defenses between the America's Light Heavyweight Championship and the World Middleweight Championship. Harry Greb 
was a true fighter in every sense of the word. Between 1917 and 1922, being in the ring with Jeff Smith seven times, Jeff Smith was known as the Bayonne Globetrotter. If you want to test yourself, you want to find out what your skill set is, get in the ring with Jeff Smith. He's very underrated. I have my top 10 most outstanding middleweight. He was a phenomenal, phenomenal fighter. He was originally from Brooklyn, New York, and he would reside in Harlem, New York. He would get better sparring. He would spar many rounds with Johnny Wilson from Harlem, New York, and they would spar at the athletic club. Being in a ring with Faye Kaiser nine times. Harry Gray would be in a ring with Joe Burrell four times. Between 1914 and 1919. Between 1915 and 1919, he'd be in the ring with Billy Misk three times. Billy Misk was also from St. Paul's. And the story with him, he would have bright disease and told by a doctor that he'd be gone in just a few weeks. Well, that didn't happen. Billy Misk would go on and fight several more fights. In his last fight, he would take on Bill Brennan because all he wanted was a Christmas for his family. And that he would do, he would defeat Bill Brennan, although he was frail and very weak at this point. But it meant so much to him to provide his family with the greatest Christmas he could ever provide for them. And they would come downstairs that morning and they would have Christmas gifts up to the ceiling. A pine smelling Christmas tree. Or what Billy Miss had ever wanted for his family. That New Year's, would have to be rushed to the hospital and it would be there where he'd be pronounced dead. Between 1917 and 1919, he'd be in a ring with Mike Gibbons, St. Paul Phantom, two times. Mike Gibbons, another underrated middleweight. Fantastic middleweight, I might ask. I also have him. My top middleweight fighters. Top 10 of all times. Between 1922 and 1925, he'd be in a ring with Gene 25 separate occasions. Between 1925 and 1926, he would take on Theodore Tiger Flowers three times. He would take on Battling Levinsky, Jack Dillon, Tommy Lachlan, Gene Tunney, Jimmy Slattery, Maxie Rosenblum, Kid Norfolk, all light heavyweight champions. He would take on Al McCoy, Johnny Wilson, Frank Klaus, Mike O'Dowd, George Chip, Theodore Tiger Flowers, Mickey Walker, all middleweight champions. Be in a ring with contenders such as Tommy Gibbons and Jeff Smith, Billy Misk, Mike Gibbons, Roland Todd, Ted Moore, Powell Moore, and Powell Reed, Allentown Joe Gans, Leo Florian Hawk, Michael Dowd, and Zulu Kid, Al Roberts and Clay Turner, Silent Martin, and Chuck Wiggins. Bob Moha, Bill Brennan, Tommy Gibbons, Soldier Jones, Ed Gunbo Smith, Captain Bob Rofer, Brian Downey, Soldier Buck, and Jack Burns. When you want to judge a fighter, no matter what we you need to make sure that his career is completely finished. Look at the time in which the man came, what was available to him, what opportunities he did not take, why he didn't take them. Look at the opponents that he faced. What was their motive operandi? Who did they fight? How did they fight them? And then you make your own judgment call. Mines is Harry Greb as my number two greatest fighter. 
May 23rd, 1922, New York's Madison Square Garden. Defeats light heavyweight, former America's Expeditionary Forces. Gene Tunney, 15 rounds. And Gene Tunney would win that title from battling Levinsky. January 30th, 1923. Defends his America's Light Heavyweight Championship crown over Philadelphia's Tommy Lachlan, who was known as the Philly Phantom. No decision in eight rounds. February 23rd, 1923. He lost his America's Light Heavyweight Championship crown, 15 rounds, to the man he won it from. 25-year-old Gene Tunney was the second title defense. And it took place in New York's Madison Square Garden. August 31st, 1923. He defends his World Middleweight Championship crown. In Harlem's Johnny Wilson. 15 rounds. New York's Madison Square Garden. Now he would become the World Middleweight Champion. when he defeated Johnny Wilson. Johnny Wilson with the Southpaw. Very unorthodox. But Harry Will, or Harry Greb, would defeat him. December 10th, 1923, lost 15 rounds to Gene Tunney, New York's Madison Square Garden. It was for the America's Light Heavyweight Championship crown that he would try to gain back from Gene Tunney. December 3rd, 1923. He defends his World Middleweight Championship crown to Brian Downey, 10 rounds. Jersey City, New Jersey. June 26, 1924. He defeats Ted Moore, New York, in 15 rounds. World Middleweight Championship crown was on the line. March 27th, 1925. 10 round no decision against Gene Tunney, St. Paul, Missouri. July 2nd, 1925, New York's Madison Square Garden. He defeats former World Welterweight Champion, Toy Bulldog, Mickey Walker, 15 rounds at New York's Madison Square Garden. Now, the thing about Mickey Walker, Harry Greb and Mickey Walker would go to an Irish pub. They would hang a few up, toss a few back, and in the middle of that party, Mickey Walker continues to heckle Harry Greb, stating that you never really beat me. I'm the better fighter. So Harry Greb says to Mickey Walker, if you feel that way, let's go outside. Mickey Walker says, let's have it. You both stagger out of that pub. And as Harry Greb was taking off his jacket, arm got caught in the sleeves. Mickey Walker shoved him down and banged him on the top, of the, in the top and the back of the head until they would break it up. July 16th, 1925, 10 rounds, no decision. Future World Light Heavyweight Champion, Maxie Rosenblum, Cleveland, Ohio, would be in the ring with Harry Greb. November 13th, 1925, he defeats Tony Mario, 15 rounds in New Orleans. January 12th, 1926, he defeats Roland Todd, 12 rounds, Toronto, Canada. February 26, 1926, he would lose 15 rounds in New York's Madison Square Garden to Theodore Tiger Flowers. August 19, 1926, he lost 15 rounds in New York's Madison Square Garden to Theodore Tiger Flowers. Harry Greb would have an eye procedure in Atlantic City, New Jersey. 
and he would die on the operating table. You see, Harry Greb would fight 47 fights, blind in one eye, from 1921 to 1926. And he took on all the Greek fighters that I mentioned to you. That's a fighter. That's a man with conviction, win at all costs. That's Harry Greb. I'm Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fistigov series. All Greek fights and all Greek fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. My number two ranked greatest fighter is Harry Greb. Look out for my number three greatest fighter in the next video, right here on the Museum of the Forgotten Fistigov series. Thanks for watching.